Hey everyone, Michael O'Brien here. Today we're gonna to be taking our first look at Hour of Joy, a modern approach to the eight card brainwave using characters from the horror franchise, Poppy Playtime. Hello my friends and welcome back to another first look video where my job is to take a closer look at some of the latest and greatest magic effects before they even hit the market. And today we're taking a look at something from O'Brien Magic Shop, that's me, uh, called Hour of Joy. This is a brand new release. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I got the idea because I wanted to put out another really cool effect from another popular uh, video game. Among Us was the last one that I did, and that was also an eight card brainwave effect. Super popular, especially amongst the kids. Absolutely loved it. And so I thought, let's do another one. But this time I wanna make it feel a little bit more like the stakes <laughs> are a little bit higher. Rather than just figuring out which one is a crewmate or which one is an imposter, you have to navigate through this game here without getting killed basically, right? So Hour of Joy is a little darker than the uh, Among Us version, sus, but it's a really, really cool effect. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what the heck is Poppy Playtime, for those of you guys who don't know. I'm also gonna be talking about the eight card brainwave, what it is, what it does, how it relates to this. And then last but not least, we're gonna talk about Hour of Joy, the project itself. What do you receive inside? What are the effects included? And all of that good stuff. Now, before I do that, it has been a while since I've shouted out new members here on the channel. So I wanted to go ahead and do that real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to Herb Everest, Blue X Waterfall, Sol Hubner, Mark Merriweather, Andrew C and SWE. These guys have become members of the Mob Squad. They're gonna get early access to videos and they're gonna unlock tutorial videos in the tutorial playlist. At the time of making this video, there's over 70 of them. So congrats to you guys. We also have two new members of the Inner Circle. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dion Labuti and Christopher Barry. They are both Mob Lieutenants. They're gonna access videos in the Inner Circle playlist. Uh, that includes the lectures, that includes live stream videos, and bonus content that only the Inner Circle members will get access to. If you guys are wondering how to join the ranks and become a member of the Mob, please go ahead and click the Join button or the Membership tab right here on the channel for more information on how to do that. If you don't wanna support that way, but you like these videos anyway and you wanna keep watching, I highly recommend that you click the Subscribe button don't forget to ring the bell, that way you guys know every time I upload a new video. All right, so now, what the heck is Poppy Playtime? As I mentioned before, Poppy Playtime is a very popular horror video game franchise created by Mob Entertainment, no affiliation of course, and uh, the idea of the game is simple. You are a worker in a toy factory that shut down 10 years ago because strange things were happening, people were going missing, and all kinds of weird things. And uh, you are back now, 10 years later, to investigate what exactly happened in this factory. Well, what you find out is that the toys actually rebelled against the workers of the factory in an event called the Hour of Joy. They killed everyone in the factory and you are learning this as you're playing through the game. And it's really cool, it's an interactive game with puzzles and problem solving and whatnot. If you haven't already played it, I highly recommend that you guys check it out because it is really cool. So that's what Poppy Playtime is basically in a nutshell. I don't wanna spoil too much of it for you guys in case you do decide that you wanna play it. But what now is an eight card brainwave? So I'm using the eight card brainwave premise as an engine for uh, this magic effect here, Hour of Joy. And basically what an eight card brainwave effect is, is you have eight cards, you have a spectator point to any of those cards, and then you reveal that the card that they chose is, let's say blue on the back, right? Is it eight of diamonds, you turn it over, and it's blue on the back. But then you show the backs of all of the other cards and the backs of all of the rest of the cards are red. So they picked the one odd card out from the rest of the cards. It's a self-working effect. Really, really easy. You could do it with any deck of cards. What I decided to do was to take this eight card brainwave engine and inject it into this effect. Now I've already done this with another piece that I call Sus. It's a eight card brainwave style effect using Among Us characters and it works very much the same way. Over the years, I've kind of 
added some new little ideas to this and I've featured very, very many of those ideas in this project as a matter of fact. So you're not just learning the eight card brainwave, you're actually gonna learn my take on the eight card brainwave and some bonus ideas as well. Which brings us now to hour of joy. So let's go ahead and open this up now, see what we have inside here. Uh, we have 18 cards included in here. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but this is an eight card brainwave effect. Why so many cards? I'm gonna show you guys here. Uh, we have a uh, Playtime Co. story card. And on the back of the card here, you have uh, a little invitation. This is sent to you by a mysterious uh, character from the factory inviting you back 10 years later to investigate exactly what's going on. Uh, you also have uh, five item cards. So these are very popular item cards from the game, right? You might recognize some of these. Uh, you have the original grab pack from chapter one. Uh, you have the green grab pack from chapter two. And then you have the purple grab pack, the flare gun. There we go. So make sure you guys can see those and the gas mask from chapter three. And on the backs of these cards, uh, you have the death screens from the game as well, right? So uh, this one says, don't die just yet, get up. Uh, I need you alive. More lives are at risk than just yours and et cetera. And these are actually uh, screens that appear while you're playing the game. If your character dies, you are resurrected again so you can continue to play the game, of course. Just like any video game where you die, you have multiple lives, right? And these use items from the game. So those are your five item cards and your five death cards there. And now the most important bit of the whole thing, your character cards, right? These are gonna have very uh, popular characters. Uh, you got like Huggy Wuggy, uh, you've got, you know, PJ Pugapillar, super cute little guy. Uh, Catnap from chapter three, he's a very popular one, a very, a uh, very fan favorite one. Uh, Bunzo Bunny, uh, you've got uh, Kissy Missy, right? There's Poppy actually right on Kissy Missy's shoulder, uh, Boxy Boo, and more. So you have a lot of very popular characters, uh, toy characters, villain characters, I guess you can say, um, featured in here as well. So that's the items that are inside the box when you receive. You're also gonna get uh, some digital products as well. So you're gonna get these posters. Now I'm not gonna physically put the posters in there because I don't want them to be damaged. I don't want to fold them up. And I want you guys to be able to choose the ones that you like. Maybe you want multiple copies of one and you don't want the other, et cetera, et cetera. But you get 15 of these in there and I'll show you what these are. These are um, employee posters. So these are actually hung up on the walls while you're walking through the toy factory in the game, right? So you can see here, uh, you know, it's got like rules of things to do and things not to do, right? Uh, be kind to others, show up on time, do not hide behind the doors to scare Leith Pierre, uh, don't stay past eight o'clock, don't misuse company time, etc. These are uh, things that the employees might see. Um, people, the general public were actually invited as well to come in, so here's, um, you know, is it your birthday? You get a discount. So like a little birthday thing. Um, make sure to lift with your knees, right? So these are like uh, kind of silly little things that you might see um, at your workplace, right? Um, this one says, uh, get your rest. All employees should adhere to the recommended four to five hours of sleep, <laughs> right? And there's a cat nap on there. Now, one thing you might notice is that these posters feature characters that are also on the cards, right? In fact, every single one of these posters features a character on the card, right? There's the Miss Delight school rules. Pay attention to your homework, play fair, respect authority, stay in your seats until the bell has rung, <laughs> right? So all kinds of really cool things. Um, yeah, these are really, really cool. And uh, we're gonna talk about these in just a moment and what these are for, but there's 15 of them. I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through here so you guys can kind of see. Uh, Catnap is your friend, please stay in your beds. Uh, following bedtime protocol. So really cool um, little little posters here. Uh, chapter three served as a sort of daycare for the kids as well. So kids were sleeping uh, in their beds and whatnot. So some of these posters were for the employees, but some of these posters were also for people that were visiting or the children that were there um, at the actual daycare center. So a lot of really cool stuff included in this. So now 
let's talk about the tutorials themselves. You're actually gonna get three tutorials with this. Uh, chapter one is going to be the Hour of Joy. This is the basic eight card brainwave effect where the spectator points to any one of the cards that they want to and uh, you're gonna reveal on the back of the card, did you survive or did you get killed, right? And it says uh, survived or killed right there on the back of the card. Uh, very graphic, again, which is why uh, I think I would recommend that you don't perform this for kids under the age of 13, but that's just a personal thing. Of course, perform this for whoever you want. I perform this for my seven-year-old and she absolutely loves it. So. Uh, just putting it out there that it is a little bit graphic. There's blood and stuff involved in this. Uh, the toys killed people after all, so just remember that. Um, but they point to a card and then they're either gonna pick a card that says that they were killed and all of the other cards survived, so maybe they're very unlucky, or they pick the only card that said survived and then all of the other cards say killed, so they actually picked the right card. You could play it either way. Uh, and then you can adjust the scripting a little bit depending on which card it is that they pick. But that's the basic effect, Hour of Joy. And that's the basic eight card brainwave effect. Didn't really modify anything from a handling perspective. Um, of course, the story is very unique and the cards themselves are very unique, but the method itself is very basic. So now you have chapter two, get up. This is gonna use the death cards. So let's just say they pointed to a card that said killed on it. You don't really want them to end on that. Well, you died, that's kind of the end of it, right? So that's why now uh, we have these five death cards, right? So again, I mentioned on the back, it says, don't die just yet, get up, I need you alive. Uh, there are greater lives at risk than yours. Death isn't permanent, it's not your time. You're gonna spread these out and have them pick a random card, right? Let's just say they pick this one here. It says, more lives are at risk than just yours, get up. And they grabbed an item there. You show the back of the card. In this case, they got the purple grab pack, right? So you put the rest of the cards away. And now you're gonna go through this again, only this time uh, you're gonna flip through the cards like this. The spectator's gonna stick the card into the, the stack of uh, character cards anywhere that they want. And now you're actually forcing the outcome to appear in the way that you want it to. In this case, you want them to survive and you want all of the other cards to say killed. So this method is going to allow you to, you know, make sure that they get the correct card this time. So the way that you can play this is, you know, you use the chapter one method first and if it fails, the chapter two method is sort of an out to that, but it doesn't feel like an out. It just feels like you're continuing the story and that this is the way that it was supposed to work out in the end, right? Now, chapter three is the Playtime Co. posters. This is where these guys come in. And basically, you're gonna play a little elimination game with them. You're gonna go back and forth eliminating the character cards until only one card remains. When you get all the way down to that last card, you're gonna reveal that there's a poster that you've had in plain sight the entire time. And when that poster is revealed, it matches the exact character that they chose. And this hits with 100% accuracy as well. There's no guessing, uh, there's no having to switch anything at the last minute. You play this little game with them and no matter what, the outcome is gonna match, right? So let's just say you're going through this entire thing and they land on Catnap. Well, you have the poster revealed here. Catnap is your friend and that is the reveal, right? Uh, you have Bunzo Bunny is another character. Let's just say they land on Bunzo. You have the Let's Party. Let's just say they land on PJ Pugapillar. You have the Hungry to Learn one, right? Uh, let's just say they land on Dog Day. Uh, or they land on uh, Miss Delight, right? You have all of these different posters here that feature the different characters that are on the cards. So no matter how they play the game, your prediction is gonna match, which makes this really cool. Now, of course, you don't have to use the cards. You can do this reveal any way that you want to. I don't know, maybe you're wearing huggy wuggy socks or you have like a kissy missy t-shirt on underneath your outfit you can play this little game and no matter how you want the reveal to go uh, you can make the reveal work out in that way and i actually am going to teach you guys a way that you can do this as well so that you can reveal two different characters at the same time because you might notice here 
uh, let me find one of them. Uh, some of these posters actually reveal multiple characters, right? So maybe you get down to uh, Mommy and Huggy Wuggy, right? Well, you have these two characters on one card here, so uh, <laughs> you can make it work out in that way where the last two cards are Mommy and Huggy, right? And then you have two characters revealed on a poster. So it works out that way. It's a really, really fun effect. And then what you can do is you can do all of these things put together. So you can make this effect be as short or as long as you want it to be. And that really is the beauty of this. You can run all the way through the whole thing. You can have them pick a card, they get killed. And then you say, oh, but death isn't the, isn't the end. I need you for more than this. Get up, let's choose an item card go through the whole thing again. Ah, you see, you were able to survive, but you know what? I wanna try one more thing with you. Let's put all the cards on the table this time. And I don't want you to think that maybe you just got lucky the second time. So this time, I'm gonna have you pointing to different cards. We're gonna start eliminating them until there's one left, right? And then you get down to that last one. And then again, let's just say they choose Miss Delight. You have that poster that's been in plain view the whole time that you've not gone anywhere near and it reveals the exact card that they chose, right? Or sometimes you get lucky and all of these reveals kind of happen at the same time, <laughs> right? Like, let's just say you're going through these cards, right? And um, they happen to land on, uh, what's a good one? Let's say they happen to land on um, Kissy Missy, right? So let's just say they choose uh, Kissy Missy here. Well, Kissy Missy is on one of the posters and Kissy Missy is one of the survive cards. So let's just say you had a prediction and Kissy Missy was the prediction that you made. They land on that one. You can have all these reveals fire at the same time. You can say, look, it's really interesting that you chose Kissy Missy because look, all of these cards say killed on the back, but the one card that you chose says that you survived. And you see that poster that I have that's been sitting there the whole time? You had a completely fair choice, right? You could have picked any of these cards, but Kissy Missy is the one that you picked. Go ahead and open the poster for me. And now they unfold the, uh, the poster and it's Kissy Missy. And now it just feels like, holy crap, how the heck did you do that? It feels impossible. And you didn't have to do anything. No forcing, no fishing, no guessing. They just, it just happened that way because they pointed to the correct card, right? It's a one out of 12 shot. And uh, you'll start to learn, the more you do this, that there's very specific cards that people choose. I've learned that Catnap is a very popular one, Huggy Wuggy is a very popular one, and Kissy Missy is a very popular one. Those three are the three that are chosen most often. So um, Kissy Missy is my reveal uh, most of the time. Sometimes I'll do Bunzo Bunny if I want to, you know, do this for like a birthday party or something like that. Hey, it's your birthday. You know, you get 15% off. You chose the Bunzo Bunny one, right? So. Uh, a lot of really cool ideas here, but I hope that this was helpful for you. If you want to watch the full performances of the little clips that I featured in this video, uh, link in the description below to a quick performance that I did with my daughter, Brianna. Shout out to my wife, Myra, for filming everything. And uh, I will see you guys next time in the next First Look video. If you want to pick this up, please go to O'BrienMagic.com slash Hour of Joy.